Welcome to ECCB Connects. On this episode, Keith Lee Phillip, business professional with over 15 years senior management experience, shared some key techniques on how to succeed in personal financial management. Mr. Phillip at the time was delivering the featured address at the graduation ceremony of the 16th cohort of the ECCB Savings and Investment Course, St. Kitts and Nevis. What is personal financial management? At the very basic level, personal financial management simply means gaining an understanding of your financial situation in order to make the most of your assets in your day-to-day -day decisions and to make provisions for your future. To many, all this really means is that you should watch what you spend and save when you are able. That isn't a bad policy. But does it reflect or does it address the intricacies involved in financial planning? And for that matter, does it address all that you have learned as it relates to personal financial management? I wish, therefore, to suggest a few obvious but elusive techniques that will help you on your journey. Track your income, but not only your income. You must track your cash outflows. You must be able to understand all of your income and all of your expenses. If you manage your income and outflows, you must know what financial instruments you have and the cost of maintaining them. Critical to this is you must know every cost that is associated with each credit card that you have in your wallet. You must know all the, the costs associated with all of your bank accounts. You must know all of the monies that you lent out with a view of getting back. Your mortgage, your car loan, your vacation fund, your retirement accounts, you must know how much is in it and how much you expect to gain in interest income. Be wary of same day loan, pay the loan, short term loan, just come in and walk out loan. Be very careful of those loans. Negotiate terms. Negotiate your interest rate. It is not enough to say that I have been with this bank since I was small. It is a business. You must weigh the risks. You must determine your inflows and your outflows. Make your payments on time. If it costs an extra interest payment to pay the day after, please pay your payment, make your payment on time. By doing this, you are ensuring that you lessen your outflows. Never spend more than you make. This certainly is a recipe for disaster. And you are defeated even before you begin. Avoid debt at all costs. Limit debt to income producing assets. By checking and understanding your income, therefore, your income and expenses, therefore, this allows you to get the most out of what you make and ultimately gain a surplus or an excess, or wealth, in a very micro level, it is the excess of what you earn and what you spent. So then, how can you track your finances? Keep detailed records. You might say, uh, that is a lot of work. For example, by working out how much money you make each day, or week, or month, or a year, as well as how much money you spent within that same period, you can quickly paint a picture of what sort of financial trajectory you're on. If I was speaking to a group of businessmen, I would say, sell more, spend less. Because truth be told, that is only how that you can develop that wealth. If you are on a fixed um, income, 
you then need to spend less. How do you keep track of your income and your expenses? A well-managed Excel sheet will do the job for you. But truth be told, there is an app for that. You don't have to worry yourself about it. Secondly, manage your financial security and growth. Once you have become uh, sufficiently proficient at managing your cash flows in and out, in an attempt to gain something what or disposable cash capital, something left over, you can now consider ways in which you may grow this wealth. I just wish to, to suggest two ways, insurance and investment. Why insurance? Insurance, for, for its part, is one of those financial investments in which there is often very little wiggle room. The truth is that it is difficult to develop an overarching strategy for managing insurance. And you know that because insurance changes, the price of it changes from the type of insurance, whether it is auto, moto, auto, home, health, or life. So therefore, you constantly have to shop and shop around to ensure that you are getting the best value for your money. Financial investment, on the other hand, involves a great deal more in terms of strategic thinking and the observance of your risk management. The truth be told is that our investment opportunities really take the form of real estate or fixed deposits, government treasury bills, or buying stock on the East Caribbean Securities Exchange. Number three, establish liquid savings. This point really follows on the previous one. You have to note that some of the money you set aside for growth or saving should be readily available in the event of an emergency. This simply means maintaining a savings account with an emergency or a rainy day a rainy day fund. So you therefore need to put away funds that you can, at the stroke of a pen, get it so that you can deal with your business. However, for others, it simply means seeking out different types of investment meant for long-term growth and for, to allow quick transactions. I was asked to address a, uh, um, a very interesting area, and that is retirement. And while I'm no expert, the baldness of my head suggests that I would have lived for a little bit. It is often said that retirement is one of life's exciting and sometimes tricky transitions. But for some, it is a very, it is a very scary undertaking, especially if your finances are not ready to retire when you are. It means your finances are not retirement ready. With retirement, you are moving from a, a, a situation or a position where you have, you are, have accumulated savings to a situation where that amount of monies that you have put aside you are now asking it to work for you. You are now asking it to provide your daily um, bread, if you will. You are now asking it to keep pace with you for the next 15 or 20 years. Consider the following that may assist you in putting some of the pieces into place. The first thing then is what? What is the vision? of your retirement. A comfortable de retirement depends a great deal on the depth of your resources, your fi uh, financial resources. Or as we say in local parlance, it depends to a great deal on how deep your pocket is. Just how deep they need to be is difficult to assess unless you set out a clear vision of what you want to accomplish. For example, 
during retirement, do you wish to travel the world? During retirement, do you plan to migrate? And if you plan to migrate, how will you adjust? Will you be able to tap into government the benefits that are offered by the government of the, uh, the country that you're visiting? Does your spouse share the same retirement vision? Or do you have children? And if so, will you depend upon them to provide for you during retirement? Secondly, what will your expenses look like? It's true that when you retire, you'll say goodbye to some of your key expenses. Perhaps if you started early, your mortgage will be paid or it is winding down. However, it can be a mistake to assume that with retirement, you will indeed be spending less. Other costs can increase. Don't be surprised if you spend more on hobbies, travel, gym membership, and other recreation. Expect health-related challenges. You may have built your house a long time. You may need to renovate. Where will these funds be coming from? Understand that retirement is different for everyone. Thirdly, what source of income can you count on? When you retire, you may have income from multiple sources. If you work with the government, you may have a pension and you may have gratuity, and then you may have social security that will come in. For many, they are not so fortunate and will require other funds to supplement or to fill that gap that will be created. Which then can persons be looking for income? Do you sell your house? Do you take a second mortgage out on it? Do you sell your business? Have you made that provision very early in life and so you built on a little side? And so you have that rented. And so you're dependent upon rental income. Even employment earnings, if you don't intend to retire all at once and seek out other employment. There are some persons who would have left the work world and then would be reemployed, even at a, low, uh, at a, low, at a lower income. Another consideration is, would you and your spouse be retiring at the same time? If no, would that one income be sufficient to tide over, to tide you over, or to provide for the home until your social security or your pension kicks in? The bottom line is this, figuring out your retirement cash flow can be more complex than you might think. So it pays to sit down with your spouse, it pays to sit down with your family members and to carefully, carefully assess your options. Your priority should be to make sure that your financial house is in order. In summary, therefore, you have begun a, jo a, a, um, a journey. A journey that has opened your eyes to the various vagaries of financial planning, financial management. If the literature is correct, you are already facing an uphill battle. What will you do with the knowledge that you have learned over this past few months? I have attempted to outline the basic concerns of a responsible individual's approach to personal financial management. 
and a few strategies to consider in executing them. Over the past months, you have given the skills and the knowledge to make this happen. I wish you well. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. To view any episode of ECCB Connects anytime, any place, at your convenience, check us out on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn at ECCB Connects. That's it for this episode of ECCB Connects. We hope that what we've shared with you will empower you to manage your finances wisely. Join us next week for another program.